Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, tonight, in our series of gematrias, we're up to the fourth letter and number in the Hebrew alphabet. Again, numbers and letters are the same. So we're up to the Dalid, and, uh, which has a numerical value of four. So last week, we saw how three is seen as symbolic of the essential foundation necessary for building a permanent structure. The number four is the place in which existence finds its expression. God creates space and man occupies it. The physical plane opens to the four points of a compass. In terms of halachic units of measurement, a parsha, parsa, is equal to four mil, and a mil is equal to between 0.06 to 0.07 miles. This means that a parsa is a distance of between 2.4 to 2.9 miles. Again, in religious uh, Gemara and whatever uh, type of uh, writings, we also have something called a tefach. A tefach is a hand breadth equal to the width of four fingers. And there is an ama. There is a ubiquitous dimension of four cubits, approximately seven feet square. In the laws of Shabbat, a Jew is forbidden to carry or transport an object a distance of four cubits in the public domain. Matters of holiness may not be recited within a distance of four cubits from something ritually impure or repugnant. A person must stand up for a Torah scholar passing within four cubits of himself. Also, a Jew should not walk four cubits without a head covering. Again, all of these using the four cubits. On the Shabbat, whatever lies within an area of four cubits by four cubits, as four amas by four amas, is a luckily classified as the same domain. In fact, every person occupies a space of four cubits, and the spatial area is said to belong to him. The word space is also used to conceptually define a person's position and standing. There is an explicit name of God called the Shem Hamafarish, the ineffable four-letter name of God. It is also known as the Tetramagatan, this comes from the Latin word meaning four letters. This name is considered God's definitive name, so much so that this is the only name of God that we never pronounce as it is written. In fact, what we call it, when we say it, we say Hashem, the name. Kabbalistic literature explains God's creation of the universe as a process in which there are four worlds representing four descending stages of holiness. They are the world of Atsilas, emanation, Bria, creation, Yitzira, formation, and Asiya, action. The divine influence descends through these four worlds until its ultimate revelation in the lowest of worlds, the world of Asiya, the world of action, which is the world that we reside within. The four primary forces in the universe are earth, water, air, and fire. A more scientific description may be four corresponding states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and energy. These four elements exactly parallel the categorization of four types of creations in the universe. They are domain, which means inert matter, tzomeach, vegetation, chai, all living creatures, and medaber, for the articulate man, the fact that we can speak. Torah tells us that the soul of the soul resides in the blood. And there are four types of blood types. There is A, B, A, B, and O. The three fathers connect with the four mothers of Israel. Again, we know the three fathers we mentioned last week, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Abram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And there are four mothers of Israel, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. These allude to the progression from three to four, where theory becomes actuality. The Jewish mothers played a pivotal role in bearing, educating, and rearing those who would develop into the nation of Israel. The letter Dalit has the shape of an open doorway, and its name Dalit can also relate to the word Delet, which is door. The Dalit also alludes to the word Dal, which is a pauper. 
The letters Dalit and Gimel are next to each other and stand for Gomel Dalim, to be kind to the needy, as the Gemara and Shabbos says. So they represent one of the two principal themes of the mitzvot. One, man's conduct and obligation regarding his fellow man. And the other principle, the theme is man's relationship to God. Again, one to man and one to God. In fact, the word ish, man, and reehu, his friend, each have a gematria of 311, alluding to the belief that a Jew should feel that he and his friend are equal. The relationship between the benefactor and the needy is depicted by the structure of the letters Gimel and Dalit and their positions in regard to one another. The Gemara elaborates, why does the foot of the Gimel extend backward toward the Dalit? That is to the left. To teach us that the Gomel, the provider of kindness, should always try to seek out the Dal, the beneficiary of his generosity, and offer help without delay, again, as we find in the Gemara and Shabbat. This is what Abraham, Avram Vino, did when he saw the three angels in the human guise approaching him, uh, again, when he was with God after the third day of his circumcision. The Dalit of the Torah script has a leg that slants backwards towards the Gimel. This implies that just as the stem of the Dalit slants towards the Gimel, so too should the Dal the poor man make himself available to the Gomel, his benefactor. The Gemara notes that the face of the Dalit is turned to the left, away from the Gimel, to show that, that the Dal, this poor man, should not have to face his Gomel, his benefactor. In fact, we have a precept that assistance should be given discreetly and with the greatest tact to preserve the self-respect of the recipient. In fact, in the temple, there was a special chamber that was called Lishkas Chashoyim, the chamber of silence, where anyone who could enter, rich or poor alike, but only one person at a time. Those who could would leave a donation to the anonymous fund. Those who needed would take from it in a discreet manner, based on the Gemara and Shkalim. And this, this was done to make Gemilas Chesed, giving charity, achieve its end as meaningful and as kind as possible, again, based on the Gemara and Sukkah. The rabbis have taught us that Gemilas Chesed, kindness, is superior to giving charity in various ways. Even a rich man who has money may still need Chesed, kindness, when he travels or when he's in a place that's unknown to him. Also the dead, whose dignity can be safeguarded with Gemilas Chesed. In fact, we learn that when one gives charity, he fulfills six mitzvot. But by doing it in a way that expresses kindness, he receives an additional 11 mitzvot, even almost twice than giving the money. Six and 11 equal the number 17, which is the gematria of the word tov, good. The number four connects with the holiday of Pesach and the Haggadah. There were four stages of liberation for the Jews in Egypt. The Torah tells us, Vahotzesi, and I will take you out. Vitzalti, and I will save you. Vahotzesi, and I will redeem you. Vahotzesi, and I will take you. Three expressions, pardon me, four expressions. These four expressions of redemption are connected to the four cups of wine. There are four Shabbosim where special portions are read on four weeks preceding the holiday of Pesach. There are four questions asked by the children, four sons. Four times the word Baruch, blessed, is mentioned in the Haggadah. And the Exodus came after four generations sojourned in Egypt. The Jews in Egypt were reincarnations of four previous generations. Generation of the flood, the generation of dispersion, to this generation of Sodom and the generation of Enosh. And in the Exodus, God revealed his four-letter ineffable name to mankind. And again, three and four are connected with the three matzot and four cups of wine, two of the major mitzvot in the service of Pesach with the Haggadah. When the Jews traveled in the desert, there were three tribes on all four sides of the compass in the camp 
corresponding to the division, we also find that in the heavenly realm, there are four archangels, again, that are on different sides of the compass. The angel Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, and Uriel are all positions in four directions around the divine chariot. Moshe, in fact, divided the judges by, after Yisro's advice, his father-in-law, in groups of 1,000, judges of 1,000, judges of 100, judges of 50, and judges of 10. Four different groups. Torah is expressed through four layers of interpretation, known by, its, by an acronym called PARDES, which translates to mean orchard. Torah can be expounded in four distinct ways. There is the pay, is pshat, literal meaning. The resh, remez, illusion. The dalad drush, for exposition. And the samach, for sod, esto, 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 es, esoteric, um, kabbalah. The Gemara tells us that a student should review his studies four times. And we learn in the Shema that it should be studied in four different situations. When you are at home, when you travel, when you go to sleep, and when you arise. And as a practical application, to study, to teach, to observe, and to practice. Yecheskel, the prophet, when he went up to heaven in a fiery chariot, beheld the likeness of four chayot, angelic beings, bearing the heavenly chariot, whose faces resembled four images. The image of a lion, an ox, an eagle, and a man. The Torah relates that from the Garden of Eden there emerged four major rivers, Pishon, Gichon, Chidekel, and Prat. Historically, the Jewish nation was exiled and placed on the authority of four kingdoms, Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans. We were exiled to all four corners of the earth. And these four kingdoms are alluded to by Abram Ravino, Abraham, and his victory over the four kings when he saved his nephew Lot. There are four non-kosher animals that have one of the two requisite signs that make an animal kosher. The camel, the hare, the badger, and the pig. The Mishnah, Mishnah enumerates four primary categories of what we call mazikim, damaging forces, the ox, the pit, man, and fire. Man is duty-bound to prevent any damages by these four forces. Failing to do so, he is obligated to pay for losses incurred. There are four basic types of sacrifices. An ola, a burnt offering. A chatas, a sin offering. An asham, a guilt offering. And a shlamim, a peace offering. And they are made up of four basic categories of creation. Salt, which is inanimate, alluded to by domain. Flour, oil, and wine, the three ways that vegetation grows. Sameach, sheep, goats, cattle, doves, and pigeons. Actually, sheep and goats are actually together, so that also gives us four, which is chai. And man, who is bringing the offering, the medaber. There are four forms of capital punishment and mentioned in the Torah, imposed upon a sinner by the Jewish court. And they are skila, stoning, srefa, burning, harig, beheading, and chenik, strangulation. These deaths exactly parallel the four elements of creation. Stoning uses earth, man is thrown to the ground, and if he doesn't die, he is stoned from stones in the ground. Burning is the use of fire, Beheading directly involves a spilling of blood that flows to the ground like water. And strangulation that kills by blocking the wind in the windpipe through which one breathes. The tabernacle, the mishkan, and the two temples, Bate Mikdashim, were destroyed after some 400 years. Again, four. The question is asked, now that the temples have been destroyed, where does the Shekhinah, the divinity of God, reside? And the Gemara and Bracha states, within the four cubits of Halacha. So the Dalit faces the next letter, which we'll deal with hopefully next week, which is He, which stands for God, Hashem. 
This teaches us that there is no greater path to godliness than poverty. The sages say that poverty is the most precious thing in the world. You can't buy it for all the money in the world. May God bless you and have a good Shabbat. And hopefully look forward to next week when we deal with the hay. Shabbat Shalom.